disciples are flourishing in areas where few, if any, Christian believers existed just a few years ago. Malang speaks to us today from a beach on the island of Cebu in the Philippines. Malang, you say on your blog that when Peter preached, 3,000 people got saved in a day. But today, a pastor preaches 3,000 sermons, and one person gets saved. Why do you think the church is so ineffective now? Because they are not doing the job of making disciples. They are doing something else. And if we do our job, then Jesus will do his job. You've had several spiritual transitions in your life. After working nine years in the institutional church, you put all your efforts into house church. You ended up holding more meetings than ever, but gave that up after eight years. Why did you feel the need to switch directions this last time? Finally, I was so tired of doing small things in the you know, houses, like meetings, training leaders, and I asked God again. My heart is for making disciples, so, and I'm so scared because I don't know how. And so the first question was how to make disciples, or am I a disciple? And so finally, God has been sharing for me. God has given us the work of making disciples and will teach us how to do it. I guess the big difference is, instead of starting out with a group of believers from different backgrounds, you now try to find an area with no believers and begin there. How's that working for you? I don't go to places where there's some Christians already, unless they are quite hungry for reality, and they wanted some conversations about making disciples, and they wanted to do it. If not, then we go to a small island, we go to near or far, we find people of peace and make disciples, and it's very good. They are very good at making disciples as well. <laughs> Don't even do a teaching on how to make disciples. So we make disciples in two to six minutes. And your first generation of disciples quickly make another generation of disciples who do the same. We're not talking about generations related by blood, but by spiritual birth. Malang, I marvel that you've seen this continue to the third and fourth generation, and sometimes more. Changing the subject a little bit, we see that in the book of Acts, everyone lived in community and shared what they had with each other. How are you putting that into practice? We are teaching the people about the kingdom uh, principles or, you know, values, like in the book of Acts chapter 2. They live from house to house, they shared everything, they don't buy and sell from each other, they just give and receive, and no one is poor among them because they own everything. And then we, uh, we've started some projects, which is called Kingdom Projects, that would take care of the orphans and the widows, and then we help the poor that live around us. Now let's talk about demonstrating the gospel of the kingdom. How is that different from what you used to do? Well, the big difference is in my house searches before for eight years, talking about house searches and talking about life. Unlike now, we are doing the job. We are, if there is a need, the best way to meet that need is not to pray for that need, but to meet that need. We carry each other's burden rather than just doing all the spiritual stuff. In other words, we just don't teach them about God, but we taught them how to live, because the kingdom is life, not programs. Molang, you've also discovered the secret of mentoring. You open your home to more than just your actual family. Tell us about the young man who recently started staying with you. He found me on Facebook and from a friend of friend, and then finally he wanted to get baptized, so he was baptized last week. And actually he is, he is here now at my house for 25 days for some training in him how to live. Yeah, we have been doing a lot so far for three days. Yesterday, we helped some new people, and uh, we built some new toilets. Wherever we go, as we go, we make this happen. Any last words you'd like to share with everyone watching our video? We are commanded to make disciples to the lost, to the world, 
and not for the church. Many Christians just keep on talking about the Bible and God and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And yet that doesn't really want to bring a person into a decision to become a disciple. Then making disciples, uh, do, it, do it quickly. So it's the growing population. Malang, thanks for talking with us. I consider you a good friend. I don't know of any better example of someone following in the footsteps of the apostles today. Everybody, you can keep up with Malang by reading his blog, malangnakua.com. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.